Ah, good morning from Little Creek Bee Ranch. Ah, a few simple chores. Simple stuff. Really simple basic stuff. Like I'm going to put on a feeder. I have six colonies to do and I thought I, I don't want to really film this. But, of course when you don't bring your camera out, that's when you have great lessons pop up. Like darn. <laughs> I just need to film every time I come to the apiary. I think that's better. Just bring the camera out. Set the tripod up. It's real simple. Okay, so I'm trying to get the sun to my back. So you see my shadow. Okay, so I'm putting on the feeder tray. Hold on just a second. <clears throat> Couple of puffs. Not a problem. Okay. Now check this out. See if I can do this. See this tray? See it, how it has steps down in thickness at the end? This is called a Boardman feeder. These are the ones I prefer. So I'm doing this kind of close to the camera. So this thickness is uh, almost like an inch almost and this is three eighths the reason that is not all the porches on beehives are the same thickness most of mine are three eighths so we're just going to slip it in now it's an old feeder it's still usable seasoned it's you know like whatever it's just a boardman feeder we have lots of these i like these Okay, couple couple of quickie lessons. So see the <laughs> let me find my camera. See the seam? Oh, it's just stapled down. It's not watertight. That's not the point. It's just stapled down. So when you put in the traditional lids that, the, that have all the holes, and the sunlight hits that jar, it it will pressurize the jar and choo, squirt out a bunch of water. That the colony's not ready to come get yet in the morning and it will start dribbling and weeping out of here and guess what you have yellow jackets wasp robbers da 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 da, da. so you have, as simple as this is you have to be very strategic about what you're doing or you're going to create your own troubles and not understand what's going on so i just use a fruit jar lid here with the t45 stapler you know the hand stapler you go clunk clunk Put three staples in the lid, take the staples out, gives me six holes. It's perfect. All right, perfect. Okay, that's the tip. Tip for the day, there you go. Now, <laughs> what prompted me to grab the camera was what's on the porch. Let's see if I can zoom in. See, see the open area on the porch? Are you able to see that? Where the brick is not. Let's go a little bit further. Oh yeah, cool. See those marks? A little further. That's as far as I can get. Those scratches, those scratch marks, those are skunks working my porch and slapping down bees and sucking them up. Little freaking morons. Midnight marauders. I hate them. Little telltale signs. I don't see any skull wads scratching the porch. Dead gummit. All right, so let's get on to putting on the. Let's see if I can do this where you can see. <clears throat> so, so my path that I walk is on the opposite side of the hive, opposite the camera. I want the feeder where the brick is, and I'll reinstall the brick because I want to be able to see the porch as I walk by. Okay, that's my objective. A little bit of smoke. Tell the girls, your house is on fire. You better go suck up some honey. Ooh, there was a pop. Propolis. Get that Kind of brush this off and a moth. <laughs>
They don't like that scraping on the porch. They don't like that. This is a good colony. Okay, now I want the feeder all the way over. If I can't get it in, I use the pry, pry bar on the handle to pop up the box just a little bit to get it in. Okay, now that's in, real simple. The brick goes back on. Snugged up to the feeder with the opening. Opening is always opposite the feeder. Now we'll come and put our drinks in here. This won't stay open. But I leave the feeder trays in all year round so that I can feed, do what I need to do, medicate. And of course, I'm behind the coach, the teacher who teaches so many others. That's the price I pay, but that's okay. I'll catch up. So see the bees come back. They literally hang back over my head behind my back like you're blocking our airway dude you fat beekeeper get out of the way and then you'll see a cloud of bees show up they literally most of them will wait in the air like get your fat butt out of the way <laughs> it's great stuff okay let's do another one forgive me for moving i'm gonna move you over uh there's a catch box where where are we catch box we'll get we might leave them out Catch box, next box, next colony. <laughs> uh, of course, I don't bring my camera out and have a great lesson. Imagine that. Let's see if I can do it here. All right, let me grab my smoker. Okay, go all the way around so you can see. That's a good group. Hadn't messed with them. Some, you know, different levels of beekeeping. You're doing different things, accomplishing different tasks. Sometimes the colonies, sometimes I just won't mess with them. And, and there's a reason for that, is I wanna know Let's just find out how good you are. Because if your gene pool is pretty good, you can manage pretty well without the beekeeper. Now that sounds like a cop out. <laughs> I know, I know you, I know it does. Some of you are going right. But once I find a good gene pool, we want to exploit that. Splits later. Okay, so feeder tray goes this away because my walk area is way over behind me very nice didn't have to mess with the box and uh, the brick that they already identify with I'm gonna snug up very nice I like that That's, that's like my wintertime porch setup. And I will leave the quart jars, you know, when they finish their food, I'll leave it in, no matter what the weather is. So, so that on nice days, I can hop out here and feed real quick. Okay, so let's go. Um, I got two more to do. So forgive me. If I'm gonna film, I'm gonna make use of it. Here we go. That's, okay, so. So there's one little apiary stand. There's one room. Now, <laughs> check this out. Sorry, gotta show you. Gotta show you. Let's see if I can do this. That's okay. Hang tough. One handed fat beekeeper with a tripod. It's amazing. Check this out. Now this is not a high stand, okay? This is not a setup. This is not like intentional. This was all for my wood. See the wood and the stones in the center? 
this was just like a way station for my beams. But the closest box to you with a gray season box, that was an old wax moth dead out. Like I hadn't got to it to clean it out. And a swarm took that of all things. And they're kind of half housed and they're not a big group, but I got to go in there later and bust that out and clean it out. That's okay, we'll get to it. But the other one, uh, the other side of it is a double medium. Now check this out. So I thought, okay, I'm gonna set a double medium catch box out here. I put in Swarm Commander. And in each of the boxes, the two, two mediums, had 10 frames drawn comb. 10 frames drawn comb, each box. Swarm Commander, two squirts uh, under the lid, and, oh, sorry, one squirt under the lid, and two squirts on the porch. Set it out one day, next day caught a big swarm. Crazy, man. This has been our spring. This is what's going on this past spring. So we're going to take that strategy and we're going to up it even more. But I just want to show you, this is not a high stand. <laughs> this is not my planned program. So what we're going to do, see those extra cinder blocks behind? We're going to take that, that double medium and we're going to come out here, oh, several feet and set it down about halfway, and then we can just carry it right over to the stand over here, All right? So so what is this? It's like, like less than 10 yards away. So it's not a problem. It's just like, uh, geez, these girls, <laughs> how dare they do what they want to do? <laughs> you just got to laugh, man. It's, it's like we got no control here. <laughs> hey, I'll take it. Okay, so let's go do another one. Here we go. Simple lessons, basic beekeeping stuff. You know, <laughs> oh boy, man, one handed with a tripod. Let's see. This is a good group. Let's see if the camera, here we go. Let's see if we can get her down. All right. No problem. Brick away. I don't like that. Okay, girls. You don't want to smash any bees, you know. They're like, okay. Not a problem. Easy bee chore. Just easy bee chore. Flat, I like to use the flat side. The flat side against the box rather than the grill. House bricks are great. They're, they're, they're fine. Now, sometimes, sometimes in the winter, something will come along or you'll come walking out and you'll find that big heavy house brick on the floor, on the ground. What the heck? It's a, either a big old giant Mondo skunk or coons or something strong enough. They want that porch. They want the access to the porch. So they, they can pull that brick down if they're a big, strong grandpa mature skunk who's smart and knows what the heck they're doing. You see, I don't know if you can see the bees. Fat bee man, it's blocking the way in. You're blocking our air path, dude. Get out of the way. Pretty cool, pretty cool. Simple chore. We're getting ready to come back in with uh, winter green tea tree drinks. Again, I'm about a month behind. It's all right, we'll catch up. We know what to do. When, when you have lots of experience, you know, you uh, have to adjust. It's all right. Okay, I'm gonna check this out. Okay, so let's, let's hear uh, this one here. Catch box, empty. Uh, Catch box, empty. Catch box, not empty. Catch box, empty. The one we're working on. Now, now. <laughs> back up. This is great. The challenges of beekeeping. See that, that one right there? It's got the sideways stone and the seasoned medium box. Yeah, they're all drawn out to the bottom of that box. The big fat box on the bottom has got no frames in it. So I have tons of wacky comb in there that I've got to figure out exactly now how am I going to 
set this up later. I'll film it because it's a big chore. But beekeeper was slow to get in there to change things up. My error. I'll pay for the error of my ways later. That's all right. All right. Let's see if we can do this one. Simple, simple, simple. Simple bee chores. Right. A little. Anyway, you can see what I'm doing. Okay, again, the, the my walking path is to my left, or to the left of the hive as you look at it. So I want to be able to see the porches as I walk by. A little bit of smoke. Make them think about, hey, your house might be on fire. You might want to go suck up a bunch of honey. Doesn't make them go to sleep, all, in, all you new beekeepers. That's a myth. That's a myth. It just makes the bees go suck up honey. Swells their abdomens. They can't roll and sting. And they, com they communicate chemically anyway. And with the smoke in there, it cuts off or over it uh, overshadows or masks their chemical communication. They can't get a rally on me. And sometimes... They, they pr literally propolize the brick to the house, man. Pop. And there's all the propolis, all the propolis on it. It's all right. Yeah, pull the little towel out. So when I moved them, I wasn't in any hurry to move, to move the towel out. And I'll clean the propolis off the, there you go. Nice, easy fit in. Yeah, that's what we want. We don't want to have to really monkey with the with the box. Okay. I want the propolis off the edge and like that. Scraping sounds. There we go. Now it's about uh, 10 o'clock, 10:30 in the morning. All the big girls are out. But if the big girls see them, the bees come right back in, get out of the way, you fat old beekeeper. I'm coming in. They got no air brakes, you know, so they got to do circles. <laughs> circles in the air. <laughs> get him out of the way. <laughs> oh, heaven's sakes, man. Okay, so I see another lesson. Okay, that's simple. Pretty simple. Check it out here. Now. <laughs> Love it. Yeah. Now this was the first one I did this morning. As you can see the bees, they're like, what the heck? I've changed their, I've changed what their porch looks like. I've changed what their porch looks like. And they're, and they're, and they're very confused about this. They'll, they'll sort it out. But I'm saying when you see the attitude, let's see if I can do it this way. This, this airspace right here, the airspace, the airspace, you'll learn to read that. You're gonna learn to read that. Like what the heck are they doing? Well, it takes, takes a lot of time. Coming out here, you can get your jacket and suit on, veil, set to the side. Don't know, we're out in front of the colonies for filming, but you set to the side. I don't know, four feet away, whatever. As long as you don't have cologne or perfume or something, they don't like alcohol smells. And, and watch the activity of the porch in that kind of that air dome I showed you. See, what they're doing right now is like, I'm confused. How do we get back in here? Because when I was here earlier, there was nothing on my porch, no brick, no feeder. It was completely open so they could zip in. Well, that's not the case right now. They're like, oh, this sucks. Confused. Okay, you don't have you don't you don't have to panic. The bees are extremely intelligent. They get frustrated because it's their plan. You're messing with my plan. What the heck are you doing? It's okay. It's okay. Let the girls sort it out. Let the girls sort it out. What about the one next to it? This is great. This one. I can't wait to film the inside of this this group. Cause this is an old moth dead out. It's it's a mess inside. I want to know how they set their house up, covered covered up in wax moths. It's terrible. So if you're learning, if you're, if you're like kind of new to, to Little Creek Bee Ranch, or if you're 
If you've never seen some of our videos, my suggestion to you if you're serious about beekeeping or if you've already been in beekeeping for a couple of years, I would highly, highly recommend that you go look at the personal advisor program on our website, littlecreekbeeranch.com. And you'll see towards the top, it says personal advisor program. Take the time and go read that, that page. Go read the service that we provide in coaching and teaching. It's going to take you about five to eight years to learn all this. Ooh, people don't want to hear that. <laughs> Sorry, you, you ain't getting a puppy dog, baby. You're getting some honeybees and they bring a really high bar. The learning curve on beekeeping is a monster. It will absolutely eat your lunch. And that's the problem people are having. They're getting into this all excited. <coughs> Excuse me. And after some months or maybe a year or two, they're going, holy cow. Yeah, no kidding. <coughs> Excuse me. And I always like to tell new students, you need to quickly learn the problems in beekeeping, learn them ahead of time and the solutions for those problems before you run into them. Too many beekeepers, new beekeepers, are always finding themselves on their heels. <laughs> well, that's the whole point. <laughs> we don't want to be on our heels, man. The bees that do, do fine on their own is a beekeeper who doesn't understand. Boy, they're going to be either on their heels or facing the mud, one or the other. <clears throat> Learning curve is high in beekeeping. Personal advisor programs, a private coaching service that uh, students seem to like a whole lot. We've packed in a whole lot of great value for a private coaching service. <coughs> Excuse me. So I was just coming out to put some feeders in. That's all this was. Okay. All right, man. <coughs> man, excuse me, I got a tickle. All right, if you got questions, email us. I try to pay attention to YouTube uh, comments. Try to catch up. If you like what we do, man, like and subscribe, thumbs up, push the button, all that good stuff. Personal advisor program, that's the ticket. Check you later.